there, it's Kelly. Welcome to my channel, Incredible Anyway. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about my experience with migraine disease. I'm gonna focus mostly on this medication, Ajovi, which is a CGRP inhibitor. It is one of a class of new medications that have recently come out in the last couple of years. I was one of the first people to start one of these medications after it was FDA approved. So I have unique perspective on this treatment. I'm gonna be explaining it. I'm also gonna be giving myself this injection on camera. I'm going to be letting you know about how this treatment has affected me a little bit later. We'll start off by talking about my experience with migraine. Migraine was the first thing that disabled me. It happened in October 2005. I have migraine without aura. I have chronic migraine, which is 15 or more days of migraine a month. I have daily debilitating intractable migraine. Intractable means resistant to treatment. Constantly dealing with a migraine. Migraine is a severe neurologic disease that profoundly impacts millions of patients in the U.S. I know people and specifically one individual that took her life because of migraine <laughs> and I know other people who have attempted because of their disability from the severity of migraine and I can tell you I've been down and suicidal myself because of it. It's a very stigmatized disease. Usually those of us with migraine, it'll take 12 weeks for a medicine to start working and then after 12 weeks if it's not start working then we have to up the dose and it takes so long to do these trial and error methods because you're always trying to see, okay, maybe it's a higher dose maybe I can stick it through the side effects is it gonna work for me or not it's such a roller coaster of hope and hoping that the next treatment works yeah I've tried over a hundred medications in addition to all of the medications that I tried I tried a lot of complementary and alternative treatments how many times I was hospitalized for 14 days at a time and patients would come in and they would get their migraines broken they would take IV medication and they would go home and I would be there day after day after day Day. Enduring these awful medications, I had to have pick lines because I was there for so long and my veins blew. I would leave the hospital just as bad as I came in. I have tried ketamine, I've tried lidocaine, I have tried so many different crazy IV therapies. I never really got significantly better ever. And my migraine advocate lit a fire under my butt and said, Kelly, you've been there for four years. It's not making a difference for you. So I went to a different doctor in Dallas and then I went to another doctor here in Chicago and this doctor doctor is giving me the best shot every new thing that's come out we have tried. I have seen several neurologists and several neurologists that are headache specialists. Neurologists that are headache specialists only work in migraine and headache disorders and if you have migraine or you deal with it in a significant way it really is the best to have a migraine specialist because they have so much more education and they have so much more knowledge than a general neurologist does. At some point you just get to this place where you say, okay, I can't change this. I have done everything in my power. I have taken every drug. I have tried every treatment that has been available to me. I have been considered a person that's at the last resort. I've been at the last resort treatments for the last seven, eight years. Research just had not caught up with migraine because I am in a small group of patients who really did not respond to any treatment. A lot of times my doctor would just say to me, Kelly, I think that we should just try to have you sleep. So to deal with these debilitating, relentless migraines for 13 plus years and have really no treatments help me was a nightmare. It really gave me a lot of coping skills. I learned a lot, but it was definitely hellish. Just say it lightly. It would have been really easy to lose hope but trying treatments and they fail every single time. It's a significant disability that people just don't understand. Most people aren't as accepting of people like me who have migraine. I can't tell you how many people who they know I have migraine disease, they know it's disabling to me, yet they still would come up to me and say, Kelly, have they figured out what's wrong with you yet? I think the reason that there's such a stigma out there and why people don't tend to understand how debilitating migraine can be is because people equate migraine with the word headache and those two things cannot be interchanged. Migraine does not equal headache and headache does not equal migraine. Migraine is not a headache, it's a neurological disease and to say it's a headache is like, it's like just naming one symptom out of many, many symptoms. Headache can be 
a symptom, one of many symptoms of migraine, but it is not necessary for headache to occur for it to be a migraine. There's something called silent migraine. I have had many migraine attacks that have not had headache as a part of it. I don't have a headache every time. Sometimes my nausea is the worst thing and I have no head pain. For me, some of the worst symptoms are the neurological ones that I can't explain, that I can't tell you. It's just hard to explain. It's hard to explain unless you've lived it. Like for example, I can be laying down and I sit up and I get much worse. That is a characteristic of migraine. Unless you've had a migraine, you don't know what it's like. And unless you've had a migraine like me almost every single day for the last 12 and a half years, it's just almost impossible to understand. Being sensitive to sound, to light, to smell, to touch, to movement, those things I think are really hard to understand unless you've had them. When I'm sensitive to light, I feel like light actually is hurting me. It's painful. Or when I'm sensitive to sound and somebody talks too loud, it actually feels like like they're physically harming me. That is because of the migraine process. This is probably true for most people who have health issues, is that they feel like they're a burden to the people that they love. Ew. No matter how much love, no matter how much the people say they care and they are happy to be there, it still just weighs so heavily on me. The things that my family has lost. I've been able to work through the feeling of being a burden. Migraine's not the only thing that's affecting me, but it hugely disables me. My primary health care provider was teaching a student doctor of his about how disabling my health issues, my migraine and my Meniere's are to me. And he was saying that migraine is as debilitating and as disabling as epilepsy is. While it's rare that migraine will kill you and epilepsy can kill you, it is as disabling as epilepsy. And I thought that that was really validating. When these new medications came out and were FDA approved, I was over the moon. It gave me a lot of hope that things were gonna change for patients with migraine. These new class of drugs, they have several names for them. It can be called an anti-CGRP, CGRP inhibitor, a CGRP antagonist, lots of different names. A lot of people in the migraine community just call them CGRPs. Now that's not an accurate definition, but it is a short version of what we call it. So CGRP stands for calcitonin gene-related peptide. A CGRP is basically a protein that is found within the brain, within the nervous system. It is synthesized in the neurons. They found that the CGRP molecule found in the nervous system and the brain is associated with migraine. And it basically deals with the transmission of pain. There are a few CGRP inhibitors that are FDA approved. They inhibit the molecule from working on the brain. Another word you'll hear used when describing CGRP inhibitors is monoclonal antibody. Antibody is a word that you would think of when we talk about things like vaccines, for example. Antibodies are proteins that counter or interfere with specific parts of another protein. As we discussed, CGRP is a protein. The monoclonal antibody that is injected in the body is to interfere with this protein like a flu vaccine. If you inject the flu vaccine in, it interferes with the flu happening. In the case of CGRP, it interferes in two different ways. One of the medications affects the actual receptor site and make it impossible for the CGRP protein to bind. The others affect the CGRP protein by binding onto the actual protein and making it impossible to be received by the receptor site. So I'm not going to go into that because I know you guys don't want to know about neuroanatomy, but that's basically how it works. It works similarly to a vaccine and it lasts in the body for a good long time. So I take this once every month. The FDA has approved three medications like this that are injected into the body subcutaneously. This one is called a Jovi. A lot of people don't know how to pronounce a Jovi. And then there's another one called Engality. And the third one's called Amavig, which is actually the very first one that was FDA approved. It was the first one that I tried. Then there is a fourth one that's been FDA approved in February of 2020, which is an IV administration. And that one's called Vipti. So I've tried Amavig, Ajovi. I have not tried Engality or Vipti. And those are the only ones that as of this filming are FDA approved. Let's get to Ajovi and how these CGRP medications have been affecting me. The first anti-CGRP medication that was FDA approved was in May of 2018 and many of you may have seen the vlog where I said 
that this is changing my life. I can't even tell you how life changing this is. This is the minute you wait for and it's not just me. I am so hopeful for me, but when I feel this joy, I feel it for our community because we've needed this for such a long time. It was where I saw the FDA's announcement of its approval of this first CGRP inhibitor. I was just so emotional because I knew it was gonna change my life. Probably will have you, um... Oh, the FDA approved! Oh my gosh, the FDA approved the CGRP! I just got a message in my email! The National Headache Foundation New Hope in Migraine Prevention. It's pleased to join millions of migraine sufferers in the U.S. in expressing our enthusiasm about yesterday's FDA approval announcement for Amgen in Novartis Amovig. Generic is Aranab, the country's first medicine specifically designed to prevent migraine. <laughs> the first in a new class of therapies known as CGRP inhibitors that promise highly effective relief from migraine related disability to a large segment of the US population. I've got to learn how to say it. Amovig is the first and only FDA approved treatment to block the calcitonin gene related peptide receptor which is a CGRP-R which plays an important role in migraine. Amovig was consistently shown to reduce monthly migraine days including in more to two days. <laughs> sorry. Including, am I dreaming? I feel like this isn't real. <laughs> this line, I'm having a hard time reading. It says, Amovig was consistently shown to reduce monthly migraine days, including in more difficult to treat populations, and that means me, with many patients achieving at least a 50% reduction. It's unbelievable. I could take a 10% reduction. It would make so much difference. This is gonna change so many people's lives. So many people. There will be young women who are in my position who will be able to go on and have families like we couldn't have because of migraine. I mean, I just couldn't take care of a child. There will be young women who will never live the life I've lived and I'm so happy. The treatment should be available in pharmacies in a week. <gasps> Talking to my nurse practitioner, I asked her, I said, how fast does this drug work? And she said, it can take a week. <laughs> so happy. Our patient constituency truly appreciates the diligence and dedications of the researchers who have worked so hard over the last several years to get to this day. I am so thankful for everyone who's ever donated money to migraine research, for the people who have invested their lives every day, day in and day out, being a researcher, being a doctor. And I'm so thankful to my migraine specialist and to my nurse practitioner. <laughs> this news of the migraine medicine being FDA approved, it feels like a dream. It feels like a dream I could have never dreamed. There's so much more to be done in migraine research. This is just the first step because not everybody is helped by it. I know very well that this could be just another treatment that I'm not helped by. And if that's the case, that's okay because there's so many people that are going to be helped by it and I know research will catch up with me. I've said that for a long time. Research has not caught up with the severity of my disease yet. I really hope and I'm going to believe that this is going to work for me. I think we all have to do that. We all have to go into every new treatment saying this is going to work. I can't wait to see what happens as soon as next week starts and people start getting this medicine. I I hope that I get it as soon as possible and wouldn't it be amazing if I were to go to team training for my service dog and didn't have to worry that I was gonna have migraine that was gonna impact my ability to learn how to work with my dog it's almost like I can't even tell you how life-changing this is and I mean it truly in a community sense I will keep you guys up to date on what I know and what I learned I'm thankful to God I'm so thankful for everyone who had a hand in this I'm thankful for the people who donated money loved ones of mine have donated money to migraine research Thank you so much. I know sometimes that's the only thing you could do. So thank you. I'm just so excited to see what's gonna happen. There's so many feelings I don't even know how to explain them all. May 17th, 2018, it's gonna change the rest of our lives. It's like a new day. Even if it's not for my life, it's a new day for everybody and hope. This is the best day of my life. I mean, the next best day will be when I get to take that injection and see what happens. I have had so much hope before and it's dashed, and then hope, and then dashed, and hope, and then dashed, but I'm gonna go in, and I'm gonna go, this is gonna work, and it's gonna do what it's supposed to do. I don't need to worry about that. God has gone before me. I just have to live it. I 
even hope that I can go into remission. When I first heard about this, I thought, like any treatment, I wanted to help, but I've seen other people get help from other treatments and I didn't get help from them. And at some point you can't have that very vulnerable hope. There's no way to survive. Being resilient sometimes means having guarded hope because otherwise, I think it would rip me up every time. I think that there is something to believing something working. That was in May of 2018. And I started my treatment journey with Amavig in June of 2018. And I was one of the first patients in my doctor's office to start receiving it, which was really exciting. It was a little bit scary too, because I was like a guinea pig, but I was happy to be a guinea pig. We don't know what the long-term side effects are of this drug. It's not processed by the liver. In the trials, they found that constipation and injection site reactions were the only two real reactions that people had during treatment and that it didn't interfere with other health issues, that there was no reason that you could not take this drug unless you maybe were pregnant or a child. It was a very, very exciting thing in the beginning, especially with the way people were helped in the trials. It was reported that people with chronic migraine, especially people who have it in a really bad way like myself, that they responded well to this drug. It gave a lot of us hope, but it also gave us hope that the migraines would be completely gone. I think that there are a handful of people where that has happened, but the vast majority of people with chronic migraine that I know have not found that result. That was a little bit devastating to the migraine community, although it did change the face of the migraine community and it did change the face of treatment options that we have. I have a moderate migraine right now and I think probably most people wouldn't know that. I'm really great about not letting people know I don't feel well, but it is harder for me to think and I'm having a harder time getting my thoughts together. But. Yeah, I'm doing the best I can. The Jovi was FDA approved in the fall of 2018. I took Amavig, which was the first one that was FDA approved from June of 2018 until February of 2019. The first month I was on it, I got the best results out of all of those months. Then it went downhill from there, unfortunately. I kept really accurate data daily. Trip tans are used to abort or stop a migraine process. I had never had a trip tan actually work that way. I had had a trip tan, maybe take down the severity like by this much, but nothing significant. Once I started to take the Amavig, my trip tan, which I use Frova, worked better. And I, for the first time, had a migraine abort, which was unbelievable. Abort means stop. It was so shocking to me to start having migraines abort was huge difference in my life. The overall severity of the migraine came down a notch. I switched to Ajovi in February of 2019. I've been on this more than a year now. I feel like the Ajovi was more effective for a longer period of time than the Amavig. Again, not as effective as we like. While I haven't responded to these drugs like we'd like, I have had change. It still unfortunately on the whole affects me daily. Sometimes I will go a day or a few without a migraine, but it's rare that I go more than two days without a migraine. Right now while I'm filming this, I am having daily migraines. It is frustrating because I am still dealing with significant effects from migraine disease. But if you think about 13 years I lived in hell and now I kind of stepped out of the door of hell. Yeah, I think probably other people's hell would be what I'm living with right now, but I know how to cope with it and I know what my reality was before. So I think that I see it differently than maybe somebody else Else would if this was their normal and they never experienced worse. I think it's all about how you look at it. I tend to have a positive view of things anyway and I choose that but the reality is that it's very hard still. I'm going to show you guys this injection and what this is like. I'm gonna finish the video here. You can catch the injection in the next video. Thank you all for watching. Don't forget to do all the things. Subscribe, hit the notification bell, comment. Please ask questions because there's so much I haven't covered. Hit the like button if you want to support me. Yeah, are those all the things? I think those are all the things. Calcitonin peptide gene, calcitonin gene related, no, gene re related peptide. Why do I can't, yeah. Calcitonin gene related peptide, described earlier. Sorry, Benny's dreaming. He likes to do that while I do videos. Remember to hold on to hope. There's so much hope today. Find something that you love about this day that you're thankful for. I am thankful for the migraine news that we're finally getting a migraine preventative. And remember, you are not alone. I am Kelly and you are not alone. Bye guys.
Used to think I had to do it on my own, but I'm never alone now.